Hi, I'm O. Today I would like to share with you a practical example on cantilever retaining wall design. This video contains only part 1, the stability check for a cantilever retaining wall. There are three important checks for the stability of a retaining wall. First, it is a need to check for an overturning about its toe. The overturning moment that is caused by the horizontal force HK shall be less than the restraining moment which is contributed by the vertical force VK. The involving factors suggested by Eurocode under persistent and transient design situation static equilibrium are 1.1 for GK and 1.5 for QK, particularly for unfavorable overturning moment whereas Favorable restraining moment are 0 0.9 for GK and 0 for QK. It is also a need to check for sliding failure along its base. The sliding force from the horizontal force HK shall be less than the friction force which is contributed by the vertical force VK and friction coefficient mu. Under consideration for combination of structural and geotechnical failure, Eurocode suggests the factors for unfavorable situation that caused by sliding are 1.35 for GK and 1.5 for QK, whereas for favorable case that contribute to friction, factors are 1.0 for GK and 0 for QK. Next, it is a need to check for bearing capacity failure of the base. It is important to make sure there is no tension beneath or negative bearing pressure to the base. Tensile stress is not desirable because the tensile strength of the soil is very small. This can be ensured with the eccentricity EC lies within the middle third of the base. Additionally, the bearing pressure Q max and Q min to the base shall be less than the bearing capacity of the soil. This pressure can be determined using equation 1. These are the design inputs for a retaining wall. Soil properties such as height of retained earth, density, internal friction angle, friction coefficient, bearing capacity, and the retaining wall parameters such as characteristic strength of concrete and steel, unit weight of reinforced concrete, estimated bar size, nominal cover, mean tensile strength, and the action surcharge. Provided also the geometry of the retaining wall, dimensions A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and the retaining width B, retaining wall height H. The forces and moments involved in the retaining wall can be analyzed in tabular form. The table can consist of this information such as item, material, category of action, force, lever arm, clockwise moment, and counterclockwise moment. Figure 1 illustrates seven items or components that contribute to the analysis. It is noted that items 1 to 3 comes from the reinforced concrete retaining wall, items 4 from backfill or soil, and item 5 from surcharge, and items 6 and 7 from active pressures. It is needed to categorize these forces either a permanent action GK or variable action QK. It can be seen that the item contributed from surcharge are QK, otherwise are GK. The forces in kilonewton can be determined based on the highlighted area of each of the item. Item 1 to 5 contributes to vertical forces and item 6 and 7 contributes to horizontal forces. Level arm of vertical force is measured as a horizontal distance from the centre of an item to point O, while Horizontal force is measured as vertical distance from centroid to point O. For example, item 1, the force can be calculated from area of the shown triangle and level arm is calculated from the equation A plus 2 third 
B minus D. For item 2, the force can be calculated from the area of the shown rectangle and lever arm is calculated from the equation A plus B minus half of D. For item 3, the force can be calculated from area of the shown rectangle and lever arm is calculated from the equation half of the total A plus B plus C. For item 4, the force can be calculated from area of the shown rectangle and lever arm is calculated from the equation A plus B plus half of the C. For item 5, the force can be calculated from the surcharge. The length C multiplies the surcharge value and lever arm is calculated from the equation A plus B plus half of the C. Ranking active earth pressure is used in calculating the lateral pressure. Lateral pressure can be determined using equation 2 for different heights, which gamma is the density of soil, H is the height of interest, W is the surcharge, and the ranking active pressure coefficient, Ka, can be obtained using equation 2b, requires information of internal friction angle phi. Once the lateral pressure is determined, the pressure diagram can be drawn. The force from item 6 can be calculated from active pressure, the area of the shown rectangle, and lever arm is calculated from the equation half of the total E plus F. Item 7 can be calculated from active pressure, the area of the shown triangle, and lever arm is calculated from the equation one third of the sum E plus F. Next, the clockwise moments can be determined by multiplying the vertical force with the lever arms. This moment can be summed up following the category of the forces, either permanent or variable. The clockwise moment is referring to the restraint moment. Similarly, the counterclockwise moments can be determined by multiplying the horizontal force with the lever arms. The counterclockwise moment is referring to the overturning moment. The total vertical force in GK and QK can be determined by summing up the appropriate forces from item 1 to 5. Whereas the total horizontal force in GK and QK can be determined by summing up the appropriate forces from items 6 to 7. Taking the results of the analysis, stability checks can be carried out according to Eurocode recommendations. By applying suggested factors to the moments such as 1.1 GK plus 1.5 QK for overturning moment and 0 0.9 GK plus 0 QK for restraining moment, it is noted that the restraining moment is greater than the overturning moment in this case and the check is found satisfactory. For sliding, sliding force is taken from HK with the recommended factors 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK and friction force using 1.0 GK plus 0 QK. And the friction coefficient in this case is 0 0.45. It is noted that the friction force is greater than the sliding force and the check is found satisfactory. If the check fails, one can provide shear key to the retaining wall. This slide shows how to determine the eccentricity and ensure no tension under the base. The eccentricity EC can be determined using the equation half of the width of the base minus the length of x. And the length of x can be obtained using the relationship of VK and moment. The calculation under this check is at serviceability state. The VK is taken from vertical forces and moment is taken from both the restraining and overturning moments by assuming clockwise is positive. 
Once the eccentricity EC is determined, it is checked within the middle third of the base, or less than B over 6, where B is the width of the base. In this case, the retaining wall has no negative pressure. Additionally, the bearing pressure can be determined using equation 1, where the N is also referring to VK, the M is VK multiplied with eccentricity EC, and Y is half of the base width, B divided by 2. Bearing area and the moment of inertia can be determined based on the bearing width, which is also the B, and the length is 1 meter. The maximum and minimum bearing pressures shall be lesser than the soil allowable bearing capacity. In this case, the check is satisfactory. Even though this is not the scope of the video, I wish to show other cases in retaining wall design and its considerations. This is the case where the retaining wall is designed with groundwater table and different properties of backfill and the drawn pressure distribution diagram. While this is the case dealing with inclined backfill, where the inclined resultant need to be resolved into vertical and horizontal components. I wish you have a good time in exploring the stability checks for a retaining wall. Part 2 of this video explains on how to design in ultimate limit state this retaining wall. See you in my next video.